Now, listen to this title, Moving Beyond Self-Report, Validation of a Communication Skills Evaluation Tool. Well, this is a title of an abstract that Professor Peter Volbrecht, who is my guest today, um, and his colleagues submitted, and, and this uh, research that, uh, that they're working on, looking at these communications rubrics and developing a new one to analyze, right, to better support these programs that are doing communications training. Now, uh, Peter, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. So let's just go back in time for a little bit. Tell us the genesis of this work. Uh, why did you decide to do this? Yeah, um, because I wanted to know whether what I was doing was working or not. That's that's what it really comes down to. Um, so I uh, run a program called Brain Explorers that does outreach with middle school students, but and that's kind of one side of what we're interested in understanding, but we do it with medical students and kind of our goal with those medical students is to improve their ability to communicate, particularly communicating science, but honestly, communication overall um, with their patients ultimately, right? Um, but our goal with them in Brain Explorers is just improving communication skills and seeing whether they're getting better, whether us working with them and talking with them about different ways to do things and, and those sorts of things is actually improving their ability to communicate. Um, what I realized when I was like, all right, there's got to be something out here where I can just like do this survey, do this thing, and it'll, you know, somebody's already done this. And I am, there, there's no doubt in my mind that, that many people have tried to evaluate communication skills, but so much of the published work is self-report uh, is we do this intervention and then somebody tells us whether they think they're better at communicating than they were before we had our conversation, did our uh, workshop, whatever. And the more I dug, the more I realized that there really is very little there uh, in terms of what is actually quantifiable and whether we can actually kind of look for improvements from kind of a point A to a point B. Um, there's a decent amount of that in medical education with kind of um, what are called OSCEs, um, where they have to communicate with a, usually a, a standardized patient. And there's some evaluation of communication skills there, but not a lot. Um, and so our, our the genesis for this was really to, to create a tool that would allow us to evaluate our own work and whether what we were doing was being successful or not. I see. So were there no existing rubrics that would allow you to do that? Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, so, th so there definitely are rubrics out there. There's rubrics for communication as a whole. There's uh, rubrics out there for patient interactions um, in evaluating communication within a patient interaction environment. Um, what we were looking for was something that would kind of cross all the boundaries um, if, if possible. Um, so we can take this same rubric and use it to evaluate our students and their ability to communicate with middle school students in a, you know, kind of more of a classroom setting and then take the exact same rubric into a setting where they're interacting with a standardized patient and evaluate their communication skills there and, and have the same evaluation rubric in place so that we can kind of a little bit more apples to apples. Clearly envi the environment and everything else is different too, um, but a little bit more apples to apples um, comparison. And so there's definitely rubrics out there. We've definitely mined some of those um, and tried to really look at what do different areas and different fields value. Um, and so we've kind of come up with a variety of, of categories that that we think are important. So kind of just that general presence and ability, um, delivery of, of your content, um, that interaction with the, um, the audience or your patient um, and kind of adapting to uh, that particular individual. Um, and then also kind of just, are you prepared uh, for this event appropriately? So some of these different pieces are some of the things that we're, we're trying to build into our rubric yeah and, and, and you know one of the things that, and i'm sure you know this as well evaluation is a challenge right in this space it's a big challenge and there's, yeah there's reports where hey this is 
something that if we had the time to do properly, we would have done it, right? And so here yep. you are, you're actually developing a whole rubric, right? <laughs> and right. Thinking about yes, that. yes. And and we're in kind of the validation stages now for that rubric. And I do want to, you know, shout out, there are definitely people who have done this type of thing. Um, while I was looking through different pieces of, of literature and whatever, um, one group in particular stood out to me that did an amazing job of evaluating the actual effectiveness of their communication skills, but it required them to bring people in, have them demonstrate some some form of communication. They recorded that whole thing, then they evaluated that whole thing, and then they had their intervention, and then they did that whole process over again. And it's just good luck getting people to come and do that. <laughs> so I, uh, a lot of props to them, but I'm, I'm what we're trying to create is something that's a little bit more broadly accessible. Yeah, and of course, all the other bells and whistles, user-friendly, easy to integrate, and all those things. So tell us about this rubric, Peter, and what you're learning from developing it. Yeah, so I think what we're learning is, um, you know, th there's a lot of pieces of communication that we, 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 we set out to build a science communication. And the more we looked at things, we realized that we're not actually worried about science communication at all. Um, what we're really worried about is communication skills more broadly, um, that all of these same themes kept popping up. So, you know, are you approachable? Are you uh, engaging with your audience? Are you adapting to your audience? Are you even interacting with your audience or are you just kind of talking at them? Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of these pieces and obviously there's pieces um, that again, even if you're going into a patient encounter, whether you've planned appropriately and done your homework and know what you're about, who you're about to go talk to and what you're about to go say matters. Um, and obviously that's clear in a classroom setting, right? But even with a patient encounter, being prepared appropriately is important too. And it, it shows when you're not. Um, and so we kept kind of coming across these same things. We thought we were going to be much more interested in like, the science content piece and all of these. And what I think the, the content part is, is one line of this rubric, like is the content accurate to the best of your knowledge <laughs> is, is where we ended up. Because a lot of times if you're evaluating communication, it's about something that you don't even know that much about. Um, and so we want people to be able to evaluate the communication skills of this individual without having to be a content expert. Um, and so, I think that's kind of where we we ended up. And one of the things is it's, it is a very subjective, communication skills is is subjective, right? There's a lot of subjectivity. Did this person connect with you compared to did they connect with me? It may They may have with you and I might've been like, this is the worst talk I've ever gone to in my life. Um, so hopefully, hopefully that's not quite that big of a dichotomy. Um, but I think what we tried to do with this rubric is really take out a lot of the subjectivity and just say, did they do this? Did they do this? Did they do this? If so, they get like a point. Like, like you just, it's yes or no questions. Um, and then from those yes or no questions, it gets like a score for, you know, okay, for demeanor and presence, there's, there's six different things that did they do them or not? And if you got six out of six, you're doing an amazing job. We have nothing to, to, to tell you. Um, if you got two out of six, we got a lot of things we can work on. Um, and it gives us just kind of a more numerical uh, value for how well am I doing? And it allows us to to take hopefully some of the guesswork and subjectivity out of out of the evaluation. Yeah, because as you, as you mentioned, there's a lot of subjectivity that's in this, right? I mean, there is value in the self-reports too. I think- Oh, for sure. If you replace the self-reports, you're saying this is an add-on, right? Is that right? Absolutely. And and what I, what we plan to do with this is actually kind of do a, a 360 evaluation with our students. And so um, particularly in our outreach stuff, but I think hopefully we'll be able to take this into other arenas as well is, you know, I'll be at, in that middle school classroom. Um, the teacher of that middle school classroom will also be there. And our medical student will be there who is actually delivering the lesson. Um, all three of us will fill out this rubric uh, and really see kind of do we all agree is one really big one, right? And if two of us agree and one of us doesn't, where's that disconnect, which I think will provide a lot of value as well. But as you and I have talked about in the past, um, you know, confidence is definitely an important part of communication skills. And so that self reported 
I'm better at communicating is certainly valuable. I don't, I don't want to say that there's no value to it. Um, we were just trying to look to move beyond that and see if there was a way to really see and, and demonstrate improvements in communication. Yeah. And so how are you validating this rubric? Yeah, great question. So we've got, um, so right now we're in the process of, we've got recorded videos of people uh, presenting uh, on various topics and, and whatnot. Um, and we're taking a variety of different people, students and faculty, um, and using this rubric to evaluate those videos. Um, once we've done that, we'll come back together. We'll kind of have a conversation like, okay, you gave them a six out of six. I gave them a four out of six. Like what, where's the disconnect? What, how are you interpreting this um, piece of, of this rubric and how can we make it more clear what we're after to really try to get kind of that inner rater reliability, um, but really something that's much more consistent is what we're going for. And then as we as we build that, we want to hopefully distribute it to more people. Um, and as we kind of tweak it, uh, continue to send that to more and more people and have people using that um, within their own uh, organizations and programs. Again, having kind of multiple people evaluating the same thing to see if we're getting the same scores um, consistently. And is that the kind of the plan to have this sort of integrated into different other scenarios, right? And one yeah. question I, I keep thinking about, so there's two part there, the broader plans for the second, also thinking through when communication is done in different languages, right? Where, mm -hmm. how, I wonder how, like, how are you thinking about that? That's a great question. And, and quite honestly, haven't thought about it a lot yet. Um, and I think, an, as you're saying that, I think another important piece of this is cultural, right? Um, and and again, in different cultures, communication, especially kind of that demeanor, presence, delivery, those pieces might be very different. Uh, in different cultures, somebody who's bubbly and enthusiastic, um, like I sometimes am, uh, <laughs> might be perceived really well. And in other uh, cultures or, or even different scenarios may be perceived as childish or um, kind of goofy, right? And so um, I think that's an important thing to consider. And, and quite honestly, we haven't gotten to that point, um, but I think it will be something to, to continue to think about, especially as we look at some of those demeanor and presence, what I consider to be approachable and friendly, um, but yet, still professional may be very different than what you consider to be that. Um, so I think that'll be something interesting that as we continue to validate the survey, um, hopefully we'll be able to tease out as we spread and send this around to to more people. Yeah, so what's what's your timeline? I'm sure there are some folk here, program directors maybe uh, running, running some similar programs thinking, hey, I wanna give this a test run. Uh, tell us about your timeline. Yeah, so um, our hope is to have a, a reasonably validated um, instrument in place by hopefully June. Um, and, and that's when we'll be presenting this at, at the um, IAMC conference, uh, International Association of Medical Science Educators um, in Minneapolis. And so we'll be presenting what we have uh, at that point. I think we'll probably be looking at a couple more months till we're really comfortable with whether or not this is a valid and and that we've tested it in enough different scenarios and environments but if people are interested in in using it and seeing how it works um i hope that they would be happy to reach out to me um there's not a lot of peter volbrex there's like i think one other one that comes up pretty regularly on google but maybe i'm i'm overcoming them i don't know um but if people want to reach out i'd be excited to share it with people and just have them try it and see whether it's effective for them and in, in the scenarios that they're wanting to use it um again our goal really is to create something that is effective across a whole bunch of different communication skies styles and settings, um, whether that's informal science communication, like, um, you know, presentations at schools and things like that, or um, outreach type events or or a, a lecture classroom, right? Um, we'd love to see it being used in all of those settings to, to try and help people improve their communication skills. Yeah. And, and what do you tell those others who have developed other rubrics uh, as they're seeing you trying to develop a new one? <laughs> what are you... What do you what do you want to tell them? Uh, thank you, <laughs> thank you for your rubrics. Um, 
and and for what you've put together. Um, I'm not sure. I think this is different. Um, and I think what it does is it pulls together a variety of different pieces. Um, I reached out to a number of, of communication uh, specialists, a number of people in, when I started doing this, I was reaching out to people in communication, uh, I'm sorry, in, in education, right? Um, and saying, okay, you've got student teachers going out to classrooms, like you guys have to have a way of evaluating whether they're doing a good job or not, right? And to some extent, yes, but also everything was still very subjective. And I think what, it, which again, I don't think is a bad thing. I think there's a lot of value in being able to provide feedback on an individual basis. Okay, here's the setting you were in and all the things, and, and this is how I think you could have done it better. But what we're trying to create is something that we can take across a variety of settings and still be able to evaluate basically the same thing. Um, I think that there's, and I think what happens with communication often, and I'm by no means a communication sciences expert. Um, so I don't want anybody to think that I, I, I feel that way about myself. I'm still learning a ton in this field. Um, but what I think is, is interesting is so many people are great communicators and we go to those people to learn and then they tell us how they think we're doing but we don't have a good tool and that's really helpful, right? That's really great if you can find that mentor and do these things, but this is hopefully something that somebody like myself who doesn't have a ton of, of expertise in the field of communication necessarily can go and say, okay, these are the things we're looking for and yes or no, did you do them? And no, you didn't do these five. Let's work on those um, without having to be an expert and kind of have I don't want to say innate. I kind of hate that idea that there's innately great communicators because those people who are great communicators often work very hard to be that good. Um, but th those people who are very good edu uh, educators or communicators, if you don't have that person, how do you learn? Right. And so hopefully this is a way for more people to say, oh, like, I got rated poorly on this. I mean, you could give this potentially if you're if you're an educator, give this to your students and ask them to evaluate you. You might not want those results back, but um, I know I know there's some lectures that I give that I definitely wouldn't want those results back because uh, they'll be like, "Well, you didn't do any of these." Um, but I think it it can hopefully be valuable in that way. Yeah, and I think this you know, one of the questions that probably people are wondering watching this when you're out there on the field, right? Um, and I wonder if you guys did this where you're observing. And then this, and that one thing that's interesting here, you have this independent observation, right? Someone else who's observing uh, individual, in this case, maybe it's a student or a graduate student that is out there on the field yeah. engaging the community. So you're saying you could use this tool to actually quantitatively measure them, give them an independent assessment, right? Mm -hmm. In addition to all the other layers, right, the subjective where um, they themselves can rate, right, of course, yeah. one, but then they have this independent measure. So do you think this will perform just as well on the field where you kind of like the, the variables are <laughs> very uncontrolled? Um, is, is that is that your thinking? That's our goal. Um, and so we, we, we built it, the kind of the first iteration was like a classroom setting. And then we were like, wait, 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 we want them to be able to like, what's our actual goal with these students is not for them to be great classroom educators. Um, that'd be, that'd be wonderful. But like our goal was actually, we're working with med students for them to be great patient uh, educators and patient communicators. That setting is very um, unscripted, <laughs> right? And so, so you don't, you don't get to say this is the direction we're going you get to start the conversation usually um and then it's a back and forth and a very bi-directional communication and so we tried to adjust this rubric to really start to build in the ability to assess that and so we've got um and I think that's really important, even in a classroom setting. And, and that's a personal preference, right? In communication, I know there's some people who still would love to lecture, but I think most educators are moving towards this, like, okay, this has kind of got to be a, a, a mutual uh, and bi-directional process. Um, but we've got that built into, it's like the delivery. And um, so 
utilizes one of the things on our delivery area is utilizing consistent interactions with that audience in a bi-directional process. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not just me talking at you, but also receiving information from you that'll allow me to adjust and adapt to where we need to, this conversation to go. And I think that's, again, the way we've got it stated, I hope <laughs> we'll see over, uh, over the validation process, but I hope that that applies both to a classroom setting and to patient encounters um, where we can say, okay, they're doing that or not. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think there's, we're in the earliest days here. So I'm so thankful that you 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 had the courage to come by and talk about this <laughs> as you're developing it, right? And and uh, I know you're presenting soon and getting more feedback and input as, as Pete mentioned earlier. I think if you're watching this and you wanna get in touch with him, do get in touch. We'll put the link uh, yes. below there to, to his profile. Uh, but yeah, please, we hope to have you back and, and, and tell us more about what you're learning in validating yeah. this tool and the feedback that you're getting. Yeah, and hopefully hopefully all good things and, and uh, we can share further with the world uh, as, it, as it improves. But, you know, as we go through different iterations and, and adjust the language, um, I think hopefully it'll be a, a valuable tool for people moving forward. Wonderful. Until right, next time. Great. Thanks.